Hi, let's start with the second week of the course and what we are going to talk about first is pricing deterministic payoffs. So payoffs for which we know exactly how much they will pay at uh, and we also know which times in the future they will be paying at. Uh, so this is usually called present value computations in say an MBA course uh, the, but we want to point out here the principles that we will be using uh, also when pricing random payoffs like options. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to assume there is a risk-free asset uh, in the market and in fact the only asset we are going to be looking at is uh, borrowing and lending let's say into a bank account. Uh, and, uh, and the bank account with a deterministic known interest rate so uh, when you put the money in the bank you know exactly how much you will get uh, at, uh, after a certain uh, amount of time and um, so the bank would quote you an interest rate uh, and the way and it's really a matter of a convention of agreement uh, what kind of interest rate the bank quotes you and if you understand the definition of interest rate then you can compute how much money you, how much one dollar will uh, uh, be worth in, a, in a whatever time from now so um, let's say the annual interest rate is denoted uh, small r like here uh, and uh, uh, if we invest one dollar today so i'm going to call it present value for today uh, and then the future value after one year uh, is one plus r dollars uh, <laughs> that's simply by definition of interest rate uh, and um, now you can after t years okay, cap after capital t years uh, you can have different definitions uh, different understandings how the interest rate will be computed for example so-called simple interest you 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 simply uh, one dollar becomes one plus t times r dollars but that's that's not usually the way uh, banks quote interest rates uh, more frequently uh, or pretty much always uh, banks would quote interest rate uh, as compounded uh, at certain in time intervals for the simplest case would be compounded just once a year which really means that after one year the bank would uh, add to your capital the interest and then after the second year it would comp compute also interest on the initial capital and the interest of the first year okay so if you after one year if you have one plus r uh, then then it would compute after two years also interest not just on one dollar but on one plus r dollars including the interest that you received for the first year uh, so it would be one plus r times one plus r after two years, so one plus r squared when, when t is two, uh, or whatever t is, you would just keep multiplying by one plus r depending on how many years have passed because you're computing also interest on interest, so compounding interest, but only once a year. Mm -hmm. Now in practice, uh, typically banks would quote interest uh, <coughs> compounded uh, more frequently than once a year, typically let's say quarterly, uh, in general, if the interest is compounded n times a year uh, and uh, we are looking at how much money we will have future value after m compounding periods, uh, then uh, the, the general formula for how much one dollar would be worth uh, m periods from now is one plus r over n uh, to, the, to the power m. Okay? So r would be called uh, the annualized uh, or nominal interest rate. Uh, and uh, you divide it by the number of compounding by the compounding frequency the number of times that uh, the interest rate is compounded per year and then you put the power uh, of, uh, of the number of periods uh, and, uh, which corresponds to the future time that you're looking at okay? so um, it, it's again it's a matter of agreement you just have to know what the definition is in this case how many times a year the interest rate uh, will be compounded and how many periods uh, we are looking at. Yeah. So that's the yeah, general formula. So let's move to the next slide. Yeah. 
typically you you compare uh, different uh, interest rates relative to one year so so you can always uh, look at the so-called effective annual interest rate which i denote here by r prime uh, so so I if you compound n times a year then after one year you will have one plus r over n to the power of n uh, that that because the, yeah, there's n periods in the year, so that that would be the actual amount of money that your one dollar becomes after one year, uh, and then you define the effective annual interest rate as the number r prime such that one plus r prime is equal to this one plus r over n to the n. Uh, so, an example: quarterly compounding uh, at a nominal annual uh, rate of eight percent. It really means just that after one year, you have 1 plus 8% over 4 to the 4. Uh, that, that's the, how much you have after one year, which happens to be 1.0824, uh, which, which means that the annualized, uh, effective annual interest rate is 8.24%. Yeah. That's how much more money you will have, how much interest you receive on the dollar, during one year. Okay, in, in this course, at least when we get to the continuous time models, it's going to be more elegant mathematically to uh, do continuous compounding. So imagining that the bank compounds interests all the time, continuously. Okay? As soon as you get interest on your dollar, then you uh, get also interest on interest, interest on interest on interest, uh, but continuously, like every millisecond, whatever. So that, that just means, uh, mathematically stylized, uh, in, uh, in a stylized way, that you just take a limit when n goes to infinity here for your future value of $1. Uh, and, uh, and, and that, for the money that you will have after one year, if the uh, interest rate is compounded continuously, and this limit is known, that's the exponential function. Okay, the limit of 1 plus r over n to the n, when n goes to infinity, is the exponential function. So you, you, this is just exponential function of r. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's, you know, that's just by definition. If I tell you that I'm giving you interest, which is continuously compounded by that, I just simply mean that for each dollar, after one year, you will have e to the r, uh, e to the r dollars uh, after capital T years, you, you just uh, uh, put this to the power of T, which is really multiplying by T in the exponent, which is also multiplying by T in the exponent here. So after T years, it simply means that if R is continuously compounded interest rate, uh, you will have E to the R T dollars uh, for each dollar that you initially invested. Yeah. So these are again just the conventions, definitions. You just have to know which interest rate the bank is quoting. All right, so, so is it going to be, for the continuously compounded rate, is that going to be more what you get after one year, uh, relative if, you, if you're looking at the same value of the rate, but it's not continuously compounded, but let's say quarterly compounded? Well, it's going to be more, right? It's a, 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 the bank is compounding your interest rate more frequently, so you will get interest on interest more frequently, so it should be more. So indeed, if we compute uh, for 8%, suppose, suppose now this is continuously compounded uh, rate, then e to the r happens to be 1.0833, which means that after one year, you get interest, uh, effective interest of 8.33%, which indeed is higher than 8.24%. Okay, so that's the highest you can get. It's the, the as frequently uh, as you can uh, compounded. Um, okay, so this is just different definitions of interest rates. All right, so now we want to reverse this procedure. I'm going to look at how much uh, something that I will get in the future, and I want, want to know how much this is worth today. What is the value? What is the price of this deterministic payoff, which I will get in the future? What, what is it today? Okay. So this is the typical present value uh, uh, computations and notions. But I'm going to make it a bit more complicated than it has to be, uh, because uh, I'm going to already apply 
the principle uh, which we will be using for pricing random payoffs. And so in order to extend the logic from deterministic payoffs to random payoffs, uh, I, I, you know, this, this present value uh, idea I will make a little bit more complicated than it usually is. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, what you could call the law of one price. So what is the law of one price? The law of one price says that if you can create the same type of payoff in the future, the same amount of payoff in the future in two different ways, uh, then the, 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 uh, th those, those payoffs, since they're going to be the same payoffs, they have to have the same price. So uh, no matter which way you create certain payoff in the future, as long as it's the same payoff, it has to have the same price. Uh, or uh, here I'm saying it a bit differently, if two cash flows, so two sequences of, of, of payments, two, uh, two sequences of payments have uh, delivered the same payments in the future, also at the same times, uh, they, they, they have the same price today, they have the same value today. I mean, this seems, uh, sounds logical, and it is, uh, because otherwise uh, you could uh, you know, sell the more expensive one uh, and buy the cheaper one and make arbitrage. Uh, so it's a natural, natural uh, thing to, to, to accept. Uh, and, and then thinking about this law of one price, I'm going to define uh, the price of a payoff of X of capital T dollars whether it's random or deterministic, okay? whether it's random, or, uh, if if I know that I can have x of t capital dollars at time capital T by investing x of zero today, okay? then today's value, today's price of x of t should be x of zero. Okay? So and, and and the point here is maybe I can create x of t by buying a bond. Uh, or um, maybe later we will see buying an option, uh, but maybe I can also create it just by trading, let's say, in the underlying stock and the and the and the bank account. Okay. No matter which way I can create that payoff, if I know for one of these ways that I have to invest x of zero, then that should be the price of that payoff. Okay. And this is basically the law of one price. Uh, if I can, I can create a payoff x of t, maybe by trading in options, maybe by trading stocks, bonds, whatever. Whichever way I can create it, uh, the, the, the value should be the same, doesn't matter. The price should be the same no matter how I create it. And so if I know that I can create it starting by x of 0, investing x of 0, then I know x of 0 should be its price today at time 0. Okay? So, um, so here today, uh, in, in this set of slides, we are, we are talking about deterministic X of T. Okay? So X of T is, say, $105. And suppose I know that uh, I have a bank which uh, uh, allows me to uh, lend money at uh, 5% uh, and borrow money at, uh, at the same rate of 5%. Uh, that means that after uh, one year, uh, I can get 105 by investing 100 today. So the price will be 100. Okay. If the rate is 5%, the price of $105 one year from now should be 100 today, because by investing 100, I can have 105 in the future. That's, that's the, uh, uh, how we are going to define the present value, denoted PV of X of T. Uh, it's really just the amount that I have to have today. Uh, if I put it in the bank, I'm going to have X of T in the future. Okay. So formally, this is the definition. If the rate is compounded n times a year, uh, and I have m periods, the x of t will be paid m periods from now, m compounding periods from now, then the price today, also called present value, is just going to be the, the future value, x of t, divided uh, by 1 plus r over n to the m. Why? Because if I multiply, this means that x of 0 times 1 plus r over n to the m is x of t which means that I, if, if I invest x of 0 today in the bank, I'm going to have that times this 1 plus r over n to the m factor, uh, uh, which is x of t. Uh, so I'm going to have x of t at time capital T, m periods from now. Okay? So it's simply the present value 
is dividing the future value, the future deterministic value x of t, by these uh, compounding factors. Right? By this definition, because that's how we get how much we have to invest today to have x of t in the future. So, all right, that's, that's the idea. Uh, that's the definition of the present value, uh, a little bit more complicated than it would really have to be. But because we are going to use, be using the same definition for options. We call, now when we, when we divide by this, we are multiplying by 1 over 1 plus r over n to the m. Uh, that's called a discount factor, because the price today is going to be lower than the value tomorrow. In the continuous case, your discount, you would divide by e to the rt, which is the same as multiplying by e to the minus rt. So in the continuously compounded rate case, you, you, the discount factor is e to the minus rt. Okay. All right. So that's the definition of present value. All right. It's easy to, it's easy to extend this to the present value of a sequence of payments called the cash flow. Uh, it's just going to be a sum of the present values of each payment. So if I have payments uh, today of x of 0, uh, tomorrow of x of 1, after two periods x of 2, after m periods x of n, m, uh, and these are exactly the compounding uh, periods, intervals, and then the present value of a sequence of payments like that is simply the sum of the present values. And I have to discount each one of them relative to the period in which it is paid. So, you know, here is to the power 1, to the power 2, to the power m. Okay. That's the present value of a sequence of payments, of a cash flow. Uh, it's, it's simply the, uh, the sum of the, uh, of the present values. Okay. Uh, there is one special case which is convenient for applications. Uh, if, I, if I look at x of 0 equal to 0, so imagine I'm not getting anything today, but then I get the same amount in the future at every period. So xi's are all equal to x for i, 1, 2, and so on. Uh, then uh, then uh, we have a formula because we have a, a geometric summing, so-called geometric series. Uh, and, and so there is a, there is a, this is the present value, and there is a formula for this sum, and the formula is here. Yeah? So this is convenient. We are going to have examples in the, in the following slides. With loans, if I'm paying each month x dollars for my, let's say, house loan, for my mortgage, uh, and I know that the interest rate, uh, annualized rate, uh, uh, nominal is r, and it's compounded uh, n times a year, and, uh, and my loan is going to be paid over m periods, uh, then, uh, then I know everything to be able to compute uh, the, the value, the present value of those payments. Okay. So uh, that's the formula. 